Hi, everyone. We're now going to look at horizontal asymptotes, HAs. An HA is a horizontal line that a graph approaches in a long run sense, as x approaches either infinity or negative infinity. So let's say that we have the graph of y equals f of x, where f of x is written like this, a polynomial in x over a polynomial in x, not 0. In fact, it doesn't even matter anymore if it's simplified. Now, when do we have an HA at y equals a number, L? Remember, we have a horizontal line when we have something like y equals 0, y equals 1, y equals 2, and so forth. So when do we have an HA at y equals a real number, L? Well, by definition, that happens if and only if if and only if the limit of f of x as x approaches infinity is L, so this long run limit is L, or the limit as x approaches negative infinity is L. If either of these is true, then there's an HA at y equals L. Now, in general, uh, it's possible that the graph of a function could have two HAs. That is actually possible. If you have the graph of y equals a function of x, you could have, a, at mo you could have actually two HAs. For example, uh, y equals the absolute value of x over x. We have an HA at y equals 1 that's relevant to the right, and we have an HA at y equals negative 1 that's relevant to the left. However, this is not a rational function. For a rational function, the graph can have at most one HA. So it could have 0 or 1 HAs if you have a rational function. If you have a non-rational function, you could have as many as two. OK. Now let's take a look at the most basic example where we have an HA, y equals 1 over x. Both branches will approach a horizontal line, namely the x-axis, which has equation y equals 0. Again, normally, HAs are dashed. The y-coordinates, or function values, approach 0 off forever to the right, and the y-coordinates or function values approach zero off forever to the left. Now, in fact, if we have y equals 1 over x squared, again, we have an ha at y equals 0. y equals 1 over x cubed. y equals 1 over x to the fourth. In fact, any time we have case 1 applying, where the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. Uh, or, in other words, the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator. I call this the bottom-heavy case by degree. The, the degree of the bottom is bigger than the degree of the top. Then we have a proper rational function in a similar way that one-third is a proper fraction. And y equals 0, the x-axis, is the only HA of the graph. So here's some examples of bottom-heavy cases. y equals 1 over x, where we have degree 0 over degree 1. y equals 1 over x squared, where we have degree 0 over degree 2. Or we could have something like uh, x cubed plus 1, which is degree 3, all over x to the fifth minus 2. Now, the graph seems pretty messed up close to x equals 0, but in the long run, we're approaching y equals 0. If you zoom out, okay, we're, basically, uh, we're, we're basically getting something that looks like the x-axis going off forever to the right and forever to the left. Degree 3 over degree 5, bottom heavy. The degree of the bottom is greater than the degree of the top. Anytime this happens, we're going to have an HA at y equals 0. Uh, 
I don't even care if this is simplified. I don't care about the real zeros of the denominator the way we did with the VAs. As far as HAs are concerned, we just care about the degree of the top versus the degree of the bottom. That's all that matters. So there are shortcuts. All right. So again, for y equals one over x, one over x approaches zero. As x approaches either infinity or negative infinity. So that means that y equals zero is an HA. If one over x approaches zero in the long run, then y equals zero is an HA, a horizontal asymptote for the graph. Basically, this happens where f of x is one over x and l is zero. But also, we can have something like this. f of x equals one over x squared plus one. What's the degree of the top? The degree of the numerator, the top, is zero. The degree of any non-zero constant is zero. What's the degree of the bottom, the denominator? The degree of the denominator is two. So again, we have the bottom heavy case. We have this case one here, and y equals zero is the only HA of the graph. The x-axis is the only HA for the graph. By the way, if you have the graph of a rational function, if you have an HA that's relevant in one direction, that same HA must be relevant in the other direction. Unlike this guy over here that we saw earlier. That was not rational. <laughs> now, hint, hint, the x-axis is the only HA. Now, at this point, we can actually sketch the graph of this y equals 1 over x squared plus 1. Hint, the x-axis is the only ha for the graph, but you can also consider issues such as domain, x and y intercepts, symmetry, and also vas, in addition to the ha we discussed. Based on these clues, try to sketch the graph. Oh, and there's another issue too, the issue of signs. The sign of f for various values of x. Go. I'll give you one minute to try to sketch the graph as best you can. We have some key hints here. All right, so let's start with the issue of domain. Now, we only have a problem when the denominator is zero. But wait a minute, if we try to solve x squared plus one equals zero, does that have any real solutions? The answer is no. So we never have a problem and the domain is just r, the set of all real numbers. Uh, speaking of which, again, the denominator is never zero for any real values of, of x. The denominator has no real zeros. The denominator has no real zeros, which means that the graph has no what? Real zeros of the denominator corresponded to VAs. No real zeros for the denominator, x squared plus one, therefore no VAs. 
no VAs. But as we mentioned before, there is an HA at y equals zero, the x-axis, because we have the bottom heavy case, degree zero over degree two. All right, now what about intercepts? What about intercepts? Um, all right. Let's consider the y-intercept first. That's easier. For the y-intercept, we plug in or substitute x equals zero. Basically, we work out f of zero. f of zero equals, when you plug in zero for x, you get one over one or one. Therefore, zero comma one is the y-intercept for the graph. But now, what about x-intercepts? What about x-intercepts? Well, now we get x-intercepts when y, or this whole thing here, equals zero. We get an x-intercept if and only if the whole fraction thing equals zero. when one over x squared plus one, the fraction, the function guy, the fraction is equal to zero. But wait a minute, when does a fraction equal zero? When does a fraction like this equal zero? When the top is zero and the bottom isn't. But wait a minute, can one ever equal zero? <laughs> can one ever equal zero? The answer is no. The top can never equal zero. Therefore, how many x-intercepts do we have? We have none. No x-intercepts. So to recap, zero comma one is the y-intercept, but we have no x-intercepts. All right. Symmetry. If you replace x with the opposite, what happens? Well, the square doesn't care, right? So f of x equals f of opposite x for all real values of x. f of x equals f of opposite x for all real values of x. Okay, all throughout the domain. Therefore, what kind of symmetry do we have? We have even symmetry, which means that the graph of this thing is symmetric about the y-axis. And finally, the sine of f. Look at this. 1 over x squared plus 1. That thing is always going to be positive, isn't it? So notice that f of x is going to be greater than 0 for all real values of x. Wow, we have a lot of information here. <laughs> Let's piece it all together, all right? Here we go. This should do it. All right, here's why. First of all, domain is all reals. All real values for x coordinates are picked up. Okay. Uh, in particular, we have no VAs, right? We have no break aparts here. All right, the domain is all real numbers. Intercepts, we have a y intercept at 0, comma 1, but we have no x intercepts. In fact, the x axis is an HA, a horizontal asymptote. It's like an electric fence, it's an HA that we never touch. Bear in mind though that sometimes you can touch the HA, which kind of freaks people out. Sometimes a graph touches or crosses over its own HA. There's a good example from trig. Y equals sine of X over X. For this guy, we have an HA at the x-axis, y equals zero, right? But, okay, the graph does touch the HA. In fact, the graph touches and crosses over the HA infinitely many times. 
which surprises you because you're so used to things like y equals one over x. And you might think, oh, wait, it doesn't look like this graph touches is HA. Well, this graph doesn't, but there are other graphs, like this guy here, that do. In fact, there are rational graphs that touch and cross over their own HAs. We'll see that. All right, anyway. Um, here, in this case, we have no x-intercepts. Uh, the graph never touches the x-axis, which happens to be the HA. This particular graph never touches its own HA. Okay, again, y-intercept at 0, 1, no x-intercepts. All right. Uh, wow, what else? f of x is always positive. That means that the graph always stays above the x-axis. That's why this bell shape is always above the x-axis, because the function values, the y-coordinates, are always positive. Uh, symmetry, it has the even symmetry. We have symmetry about the y-axis. So it kind of makes sense that starting at the y-intercept of 0, 1, we approach the x-axis over here because the x-axis is an HA. We approach the HA, all right, y equals 0. We have symmetry. We also approach the HA in this direction. And because this function guy, y equals 1 over x squared plus 1, he's pretty simple. We don't expect this thing to be too wobbly. He's not that complicated. All right. So, wow, lots of information there. Uh, Desmos does a better job of it, by the way. <laughs> uh, let's graph y equals uh, 1 over x squared plus 1. Again, the various features. Domain is all real numbers. We pick up all real numbers as x coordinates. This guy is always positive for all real x. This thing is always above the x-axis. The x-axis is an HA because this thing's bottom heavy in degree. We have degree zero over degree two. Uh, there are no x-intercepts. This particular graph does not touch its own HA, although uh, in general, a graph could do that. This graph does not touch its own HA. We do have a y-intercept at zero comma one. Again, we have even symmetry about the y-axis. It makes sense that we have this bell shape here. And we have no VAs. Uh, the fact that the domain is all reals is very consistent with the idea that we have no VAs. I mean, in principle, uh, a graph could do something like this, touch, and then explode over here. But no rational graph does this, quite frankly. Uh, no rational graph does this. So the fact that we have no VAs, that's very consistent with the fact that uh, the domain is all real numbers. Wow, <laughs> all this information here. We know a lot, all this information here. Domain, intercept, symmetry, VAs and HAs, sign of F. A lot of information, we can do a good job of sketching the graph, and we only had a, a point plot one point, zero comma one. We, use, we used our mathematical sense to sketch the graph without having to do any other point plotting besides this guy. All right, so this was another example of the bottom heavy case in degree, where the HA was at y equals zero, the x-axis. What if we have a situation where uh, something like this is not bottom heavy? For example, in case two, we'll look at the case where we have equal degrees on top and bottom next time.